Okay, the next set of questions uh, are going to be about what's known as elementary particle physics. Question 24 says, what charge would a meson have if it was made up of a quark, of an up quark, an up quark, and an anti-bottom quark? So what would its charge be? Well, in order to give you a little background, I want to fill you in here on what is going on. Usually when you do elementary particle physics, it helps to have a little tables and stuff to visualize what's going on. <clears throat> well, it turns out in particle physics that we have what is known as um, particles that constitute matter. So the, we call those the constituents of matter. Constituents of matter. And we call uh, those are made up of uh, quarks. And we have basically six different kinds of quarks. An up quark and a down quark, a charm quark, a strange quark, a top quark, and a bottom quark. And of course, there, there are the antiparticles of all of these. The antiparticles have all the opposite properties of the particles themselves. Antiparticle up, antiparticle down, antiparticle charmed, antiparticle strange. So the antiparticles are written this way. Antiparticle C, antiparticle top quark, antiparticle down, strange, bottom, right? This is called charmed quark, strange, top, bottom, okay? And as you go this way, the quarks are getting heavier. Okay, um, quarks make up matter such as neutrons, protons, and things like that. Uh, then there are what are known as the leptons. Leptons are not made up of quarks. Okay, they contain, of course, the most common one that we all know of is the electron. Okay, and then paired with every lepton is a neutrino. So there is what's known as an electron neutrino. It's written kind of like a V symbol, uh, electron neutrino. Then there is a subatomic particle called the muon, written with the Greek letter mu, okay? And then there is the muon neutrino. Muon neutrino. And then there is the tau, sub subatomic particle tau. And then there is the muon, uh, the and then there is the tau neutrino, okay? <clears throat> so, and then of course there are the antiparticles of that. Antiparticle of the electron, antiparticle of this. So you have anti, 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 okay? Now, besides the constituents of matter, there are what are, are known as the Force carriers, force carriers. In other words, they help to uh, propagate the forces of nature. Uh, for example, when the earth is going around the sun and the sun is attracting the earth with the force of gravity, how does the earth and how does the sun know each other exist? The force carrier for gravity is called the graviton, okay? which as of yet has not been discovered yet. Uh, so we have the graviton that helps to um, propagate the force of gravity, this is for gravity. And then we have the uh, W and Z boson, W and Z boson, okay? And W and Z bosons help to uh, propagate the weak nuclear force. Weak nuclear force. And of course, there are the anti-particles of this. The anti-graviton, the anti-W and Z boson, okay? And then we have the, the electromagnetic force and the photon helps to propagate the electromagnetic force. Photon. The electromagnetic force, there are four basic forces of nature. Gravity, weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force, and strong nuclear force. Strong nuclear force. 
is um, communicated through the gluons. Gluons. These particles help to mediate the forces of nature. Okay, so let's go back for, uh, to the quarks for a second. When you put quarks together, what kind of matter can you get? Well, one of the kinds of matter that you can get is what we know, of course, is the neutron and the proton. That's the most common one. So when you put uh, quarks together, what kind of matter can you get? Well, you have the option of putting three quarks together. Three quarks together. And what do those form? When you have three quarks together, they form baryons. Baryons. So baryon is not a fundamental particle of nature. It's basically taking three quarks, putting them together, fusing them. The baryon is made up of three quarks. And uh, the strong nuclear force is what keeps the, um, the quarks together, okay? And it forms together as a combination, it forms a baryon. Okay, what kind of baryons do we know? Well, of course, most of you will already know protons and neutrons. Protons, neutrons. Those are the most common type of baryon, right? Other kind of baryons that you might not have heard about are the lambda, sigma, chi and omega. Lambda, the sigma, the chi, and the omega. Okay? The proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark. Two up one down. The neutron is made up of what? Neutron is made up of one up quark, two down quarks. One up, two down. And then lambda, well lambda is made up of up down strange. Up down strange. So one of the, these, a down and a strange, UDS. Okay, sigma, is made, the lambda is always going to be zero, chargeless. The neutron is going to be zero charge. The proton is going to be positive one charge. The sigma has three choices. It could be plus one, zero, or negative one. Okay. The chi, this one, can be uh, zero or negative. Okay. I'm not going to go too much detail into the sigma. We have three possible choices. Chi also has a couple choices. It could be either zero or um, minus. Omega is usually going to be minus one charge. Okay? The omega will be made up of three strange quarks. S, S, S. Okay? And of course, all of these have their antiparticles. There's antiparticle omega, anti-chi, anti-sigma, anti-lambda, anti-neutrons, and anti uh, and uh, anti-protons, uh, okay? So, what other ways are there to make up, to combine quarks? Well, you can combine two quarks. Those are the kind of matter called mesons. Mesons, okay? Three quarks form baryons, two quarks form mesons, right? So here are some uh, common mesons, pion, is called one, pion, let's write it up here, pion, um, then you have kion, kion, okay, and you have eta, okay. What's significant about the meson? It has two quarks, okay. So for example, the makeup of the pion, pi plus, okay, is that it has an up quark and an anti down quark. Up quark and anti down quark. And you also have a K on K plus. There's also a pi on minus. There's a chi on minus. But right now I'm just giving you the pluses. Chi on plus is going to be an up 
and an anti strange quark. Okay, so now notice what? From here we notice that uh, uh, Mason, okay, always has one quark and the other quark has to be an anti quark. Okay, why is that? Well, quarks have certain qualities to them, certain properties to them, okay? And there, one of those properties is what's known as the baryon number, okay? So if we go and we write a table like this, okay? <clears throat> they all have what's known as spin property. They all have spin half, okay? Uh, charge, the charge of the that is also a certain uh, property of the quark. The up quark has a charge of plus two thirds E. Uh, down quark has a charge of negative one third E. The strange quark has a charge of negative one third E. The charm quark has a charge of positive two thirds E. The bottom quark, negative one third E. And top quark, positive two thirds E. The next uh, property of quarks is baryon number. Baryon number. All of them have the property of baryon number one third. One third, one third, one third, one third, one third, one third. That actually explains the mystery. Why are baryons made up of three quarks? Well, if you put any three of them together, any three of them together, it's gonna give you a baryon, right? Now, a meson, is meson a baryon? No, a meson is a meson. What should its baryon number be? Its baryon number should be zero because it's not a baryon, right? So if it has two quarks, one of them has a baryon number of one third, what should the baryon number of the other quark be? Negative one third, right? Well, all of the quarks have baryon number of one third. Their antiparticles have the opposite baryon number, have the opposite charge, have the opposite spin, okay? So for baryon number, they're all gonna have baryon number negative one third. So if, uh, if this one has baryon number negative one third, what's the total of baryon number? One third minus one third gives you zero, okay? Therefore, mesons have to have always one quark, one anti-quark, so that their baryon number is zero. There are also other properties of quarks, such as strangeness. Strangeness. The strangeness of this zero, zero. The strangeness of the strange quark is negative one. The anti-strange quark is positive one, right? The charmness is uh, uh, the charm quark is gonna be zero, 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 zero. None of them have a, the property of a strangeness. So what we see about the strangeness property is that in a lot of reactions, the strangeness property of the reaction has to be conserved, okay? We'll talk about that later on, on another video. Uh, the this is known as the conservation of strangeness number. There's also conservation of baryon number. There's also conservation of charge, conservation of mass, conservation of energy. These are all properties. And whenever we look at certain reactions, we, see, we look to see if their strangeness number is conserved, their um, baryon number is conserved, and so on and so forth, okay? There's also other properties of quarks, such as their charmness, their bottomness, and their topness. So now, let's look at this question. Now we are ready to analyze. What charge would a meson have if it was made up of an up quark? Well, up quark, charge, plus two thirds. Okay, so that would be the up quark. And an anti-bottom quark. Anti-bottom. Okay, look at the bottom. What is this charge? Okay, negative one third E. Anti-bottom would have opposite property. Positive one third E. Positive one third E. Two thirds one third gives you what? Well, when you add them, it just gives you one E. So the charge would be positive one C. Well, if you go back to the proton, let's see if this makes sense. 
Two up quarks and a down. What is its charge? Two up quarks, two up quarks gives you what? What is that charge? Okay, so let's look at the proton here. UUD. Okay, the charge of the up quark is two thirds. The charge of the up quark is two thirds. What's the charge of the down? Negative one third. What's the total charge? That's uh, four thirds minus one, three thirds. One E. Okay, therefore, the proton has a positive one charge, which we already know to be true. So therefore, the proton also has a charge of positive one, right? How about the neutron? The neutron has one up quark, one, two down quarks, right? UDD. Well, the charge of this is two thirds. The charge of this is minus one third, minus one third. What's the total charge of the neutron? Two minus one minus one, zero. Therefore, the neutron does not have a net charge, which we already know to be true, okay? So now you know how to approach these kinds of things. It's very important that you look at tables like this. I know there's a lot of terminology and things like that here, but the more you look at it and study it, the more you will understand the meaning of all of these things. So this is basically nature at the very, very core, according to elementary particle physics, okay? Thank you very much.